Hi there, it's Edith and I'm coming to you today with week number two of our project pantry. Um, I wanted to talk to you for a few minutes. Uh, I, um, I am a firm believer in being prepared and having enough food to provide for our families. I love that Lisa and Heather and Mandy are all doing this because it helps all of us so much to focus on our food. Um, I have been storing food my whole life, and I'm almost 60. Next year, I'll be the big 6 0. <laughs> and so it's something that's been very important to me. I started storing food actually before I even got married. And um, I belonged to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So I'm a Mormon. And you know the Mormons store food. That's what we've been taught to do all our lives. And so um, I, I um, come about it in two different ways. And that's what I want to share with you. Um, the Church has taught us that we should have a three-month supply of food if we can. We should start out with getting a week's worth and then two weeks and a month and then, you know, until we get a three-month supply to sustain our families. And so that's what I've always tried to do is get enough food that we could have enough food on hand to feed our family in case of an emergency for three months and to help us and then they tell us after we get that food supply then we need to go further and get a full year supply of food but that food is long-term storage that type of food is um uh it would be like whole wheat I have crack, uh, whole, it's like wheat berries, crack wheat, whole wheat, that you grind up and make your own flour, or um, even regular flour, and sugar, and salt, and yeast, and you want all of that, some of that at least, in your, um, in your short-term stores too, but I'm talking large amounts, like uh, legumes, your legumes and um, stuff like that. You want to have storage like that. Your powdered milks and your powdered eggs if you want eggs and stuff like that is the longer term storage. And so um, I try to get a supply of both. I don't have a year's supply of uh, food. I have a three month supply of, of food for the um, short term and I have some of the long term food storage too. I uh, got really sick about four years ago and my food storage really dwindled and so I've been trying really hard to bring it back up to where it used to be and um, I I just think it's so important. I told my husband I've been really sick and it's hard for me. I, I've canned quite a bit and it's really, really hard for me. I just, I just can't hardly do it. But I told him I will work really hard to do it to get a food storage because I envision my little grandbabies hungry. And if they're hungry, grandma needs to make sure and have food to share with the families. I don't know that we'll use all the food that I have stored, but I can share with my children and share with others, share and share alike. And I, I believe if things got really tough, um, we will want to share with others what joy that gives me to be able to help another family out. That is how I feel we're supposed to do is serve and um, help others in times of need. And then... Um, I also believe that we may be able to barter. We may be able to share with them. Maybe I have some flour and they have the eggs. And we can share and share alike. And I think that's really a, a good idea to have things like that too. And help each other out. 
And so, anyway, uh, this is all in case of an emergency. Um, an emergency here where I live in Wyoming would be probably an earthquake. And it could devastate everything. And I, I think one of the things that scares me the most, even if the immediate danger were even a uh, hundred miles, uh, you know, 200 miles, 300 miles from us, it could really um, shut down the trucking system on the interstates and we may not be able to get the supplies in. I know where I live we have really bad winter storms and the roads are not passable and the the packages and all the things that we've ordered, they don't make it here until things let up. And if it were an earthquake or a, a fires or any imminent danger that mess, you know, that messes up the the system that we have in our in our country, I can see that we may not be able to get supplies. And you all know how fast the grocery stores. Uh, are diminished and everything's gone. You won't be able to get the supplies you need. And so I think preparing ahead is a wonderful idea. So anyway, I'm here with week two. Um, I'll quit rambling. I just wanted you to know my thoughts about food storage and how important it is. It is. I need to sit down and really make an assessment of what I have and what I need. I know what I have in my head, but I need to really just write it all down and make a plan for this year of what I need to buy and what I want to get for our long and short-term food storage. And so I'm, I'm excited to do this. I love it. I love everything you post. It's, um, it teaches me so much. I'm, I'm thrilled with all of it. And so I will go now and flip the camera around and show you what I have for this week. Yesterday, my husband went to Costco for me. We live about two hours from uh, the closest Costco, but he was going to the city, and so I had him stop by and get some food storage for this week um, for my extended pantry. This is, um, sorry about the glare, I got, he got a case of pineapple chunks. I didn't ask him to get this, but he knows that we love pineapple, and um, it's just so good to have in your extended pantry for a lot of different things and so he grabbed a case of pineapple chunks for me uh he bought some salt and pepper salt and pepper makes food taste better <laughs> and so he got a couple of uh we would like to use this kind that um has the grinder built in and so he bought some sea salt and some uh black pepper uh, tuna fish. I love this albacore solid white tuna in water. It's my favorite tuna and I just can't find uh, anywhere that I can buy it. It's as good as the Kirkland kind and so he bought one of those for us and then he bought for me some Sensodyne toothpaste. I have sensitive teeth and I can't imagine not having my toothpaste. And so he bought some of that for our extended pantry. I also this week um, have bought a case of bacon. Uh, I can get bacon, a 40 pound box of bacon. I can get bacon for a really good price from a, um, a lady in our area that uh, has access to it. And it's really good bacon for a really good price. And so she, uh, I ordered a box of bacon for our extended freezer pantry to put in the freezer. And we'll have bacon for the summer um, and for, for our extended pantry that would last us for a long time. Just my husband and I eat it and so it will last us for a long time. And so, um, yeah, and then I'm going to, I need to go to the bank because I don't have any cash, but... I will put 20 more dollars in my money for this week and so we're starting it's only been two weeks and already my extended pantry is growing and I just love this so much it's a, a wonderful thing to do 
it will um, help me have peace of mind and help my pantry grow so much. So anyway, that's what I have for this week. And uh, I thought I'd make a quick video and show you. So we'll just talk to you again next week.